Imagine being told to stay home and your home is your car. Not fun. For the last few months, I've been interviewing stand-up comedians living out of their vehicles right here in Los Angeles. Now, I could have never imagined what was about to happen. A statewide order for people to stay at home. These audio clips I'm going to play you were supposed to be part of this new podcast I've been developing called What's Wrong with Orny Adams? I know it's a pretty good title. For the last year, I've been compiling... Uh, audio clips on the road of stories, interviews with people. And I was developing this podcast and it was going great. But then coronavirus. Kind of hard to go out on the road and interview people when there is no road. So now I'm trying to figure out what to do with the, you know, with the format. But in the meantime, I wanted to release these clips because I, I think they're timely. And, and I'll share the podcast with you eventually. We have three episodes that are absolutely complete. Uh, I'm excited. I, I built out this studio. I've got this, this cool graphic. Uh, I, I, have, I, have a, I have a theme song that we can, we can play. This is my theme song for What's Wrong with Orny Adams. Uh, but that's a whole other story. So I'm trying to figure out what, what do I do with this podcast? Now, in the meantime, funny little friend. That's what you feel. I'm going to say the whole thing. He's got crazy hair. He's, He's got, got great, great big, big eyes. eyes. What's his name, Kev? Orny. Orny. Adams. Adams. All right. So, <laughs> so the whole premise of the podcast was I was going to find interesting stories and share them with you. Well, it just so happens I found out one of my editors working on this podcast was living out of his vehicle. His Prius. I'm like, that's, that's a whole story right in front of me. For the next three days, I will be releasing one video a day as part of a three-part series on people living in their cars right now in America. This is part one. Buddy, what's up? How you doing? Uh, I'm living the dream. Are you? You sure? Yeah. Looks like Hi. you're inside. Looks like you're inside. I'm inside. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. Huh? What happened? Not not in the car anymore? Hello there. That's Alex Kahn. He is, uh, he's one of the editors here, uh, What's Wrong With The Winnie Adams. And we were talking one day. I said, well, you know, tell me about yourself. Like, where do you live? And, and Alex said... Uh, I live in my car. Right. Yeah. These are clean. This a uh, duffel bag. Um, and then, you can't really tell... But my, uh, my guitar case here is, uh, is where my head goes, where my pillow goes. I have so many questions. Do you shower? Where do you shower? Planet Fitness. I shower at 24 Hour Fitness every morning. Wow. Yeah. So radar. nothing scary? Nobody? I've the had... cops knocking on your window is pretty spooky. That... Oh, are they allowed? I mean, what's the law? Uh, you're not supposed to in, in most of the neighborhoods that I sleep in. But uh, one night I parked, I pulled up next to this dude's this house, and uh, and he was backing out of his place right when I did it. And it was right near the improv. And... Let me uh, pause it here for a second. The person speaking, that is Michael D'Angelo. He is also a stand-up comedian that works at the improv and also lives out of his car. How many of you guys are living in your cars? Yeah, there's quite a few comedians living in, I mean, in L.A. in general, but there's quite a few comedians living in their car. It's really a... Uh, it's really um, common. If you and I went together to the patio at this store on a Monday night at 6 o'clock, I could point to you 30 people that live in their cars this that I is, know. This is so eye-opening. I, I had no clue. Lost. Like, Yeah, I mean, you guys, I, I work with you guys. I just assume you go back to your apartments and whatever. I mean, I'm not judging. I think it's great. Yeah. Uh, people see us. People always ask. He's con said it best. Like people see us, and they're like, "But you're so clean." Uh huh. What do you? You live in your car? No way. People don't. People don't believe it. What do your families think? Your parents? Oh, my mom cried when she found out. Yeah. Like really cool. It's quite a sacrifice for comedy. There's a lot of people out there making these sacrifices to uh, to get their, their their dream. And I'll just tell you, don't let the dream kill you. That's my only advice to you guys. Thank yeah. you. Does it smell in there? I didn't want to stick mine, my head in. Mine does. Yeah. He does. Mine does. He's dude. clean. I, I'm a clean freak. I'm yeah. like, I'm over uh, about it. I clean everything. And you have no storage area, like you mentioned before, your recording equipment. You have yeah. no place to store this stuff? Uh, so I'm in the point where I'm going to probably rip the back seats out and build out like a, a lockbox. Oh, home renovations. Yeah, I'm a renovator, dude. <laughs>
Yeah. I don't mean to make light of it, but it's oh. fact. And I'll tell you why. Because I truly believe this is a choice. I do not believe you have to be here. I, For I, sure, yeah. You no. have a home in Vegas. You both dress very nice. There's my, So you, you enjoy... Like, there's some people that... Um, enjoy living off the grid in small homes it's not for me it i made different sacrifices uh in order to get where i am so i get that i get the dedication i no, repre- no, appreciate no, and res- no, respect no, that for no, sure no, so no, we're not to feel bad for you no no not at all we, no, we're not looking for pity so if anything i feel like i have an edge over a lot of people because my ability to have like i have very little things tied to me and strings in my life i have no i'm not responsible to anybody i don't have roommates i don't have rent to pay I'm I'm in a much more nimble state, free flow state than a lot of people. I feel like I have a huge advantage being in my car. Let me stop it here. So you bought a trailer. Let me stop it here. This is my friend Dunya. She's from Switzerland. I met her at the gym. At the time, she was living in an RV on the streets of Los Angeles, and this thing, this thing never ran. It was always being towed. So you bought a trailer. I bought a trailer. And you lived in it. And I lived in it. And every day you came to the gym and something else was broken. Yeah, I was devastated. <laughs> <laughs> Did it run? Did it ever run? No, that was my problem. <laughs> it never ran. She was stranded in your trailer. Yeah. Did you have running water in there? Uh, no, I mean, I could have uh, running water, but I was so busy to keep that thing running. I'm out. So no I running water, I water? No bathroom? Don't you no use shower. the gym to shower? I did, yeah. yeah. Yes. That's what you guys do, isn't it? Yeah. That's what everybody does. Is that, I, uh, I just brush out on the street, baby. Do yeah. I brush it dry. No, you told me I you go to Starbucks. I work out. Like, I usually get ready at the gym. But, yeah, mm. I mean, I'm at Starbucks for Wi-Fi more than anything. But, yeah, that's, a day, mm. that's my morning stop, yeah. And what about you, Michael? Yeah, I, I brush my teeth. It's usually in the street. But in my morning routine is, at night, it's usually in the street. And then my morning routine, unless I party, party really hard the night before and I just have to sleep next to where my job is and go straight into work, I wake up, I go to the gym every morning. Do I mean, there. mentally, how, don't you need a place to call home, a place to go to? No. No, you don't. I would. You know, we both come from pretty good lives in Vegas. We both, like, had money and we had the normal thing going on. I don't, like... This is better. Yeah. For sure. This isn't a, a fight the system stance that you're taking. No. no. I want to hear something amazing. Alex lived in his car in Colorado. Yeah, I uh, I had a first snow in Denver. I when I first started living in oh. in the car, I lived in I was in Denver and uh <laughs> okay, So about, how long you're in Denver for how many months? 9 months. How many months are you living in your car? Um 4 of them. 4 of them. Yeah. Every single night. Yeah. You have nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Even though it's snowing, it's freezing. I mean, yeah, it was good. I mean, once it got really cold, that's when I knew I had to leave. But yeah, I mean, every night, it was fun. Honestly, what? The- and what are you in? A, you're in a sleeping bag that has some sort of thermal. Yeah, I have a really good, uh, like, negative 22 degree rate. Does it really keep you warm? I mean, in LA, it keeps me very warm. In uh-huh. Denver, it didn't keep oh, me that wow. warm, but. And you've got your car running on and off throughout the night? Uh, a lot of the time. But like I was uh, mentioning earlier, you can't really do it when it snows. You can't run the heat because mm-hmm. if the snow coats the ground and like it snows a couple inches and it covers your exhaust pipe, you can get carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh, interesting. So it's illegal to run your car and sleep in it in cold places for that reason. Where did you find the police more lenient? In Denver or Los Angeles? So in Denver, so like I, it's interesting that I, I spend a lot of time in neighborhoods here because my car is tinted out. You can't see me in there. No one knows I'm in there. I'm quick in quick. I get off work late. I'm very non-invasive. In Denver, if people catch you sleeping in their neighborhood, they get very uncomfortable. Yeah. Why you're living in your cars? <laughs> um, I live Is it in, a protest? No. I live in my car because uh, it makes too much sense financially. Alex, why are you living in your car? Uh, yeah, uh, I agree. Are you all right? A, yeah, perfect. <laughs> I live in my car because uh, it is a financial decision for sure. And uh, it's part of a protest to L.A. It's not a protest to... To society, but I don't really, uh, I don't want to partake in LA. I get here, I don't really, uh, I don't feel at home in this city. And mm. many I, of us don't. Yeah. And I, and I also, I feel very, uh, I have like huge commitment issues and I feel very bound by, by big financial, like, undertakings and 12 months at three grand a month you know that's thirty six thousand dollars that uh that i don't want to sign up for i want to be able mm-hmm. to leave whenever i want 
You have a girlfriend, right? I do have a girlfriend. And you would rather stay in your car than in her apartment. I mean, at this point, for me, yeah. I mean, she would rather me stay in her apartment. And a lot of the time, nowadays, I do. We've been together for two years. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, living in the car with the uh, quarantine is interesting. Um, everything's closed, man. A lot of the... Uh, a lot of the uh, services I rely on to make this lifestyle kind of happen are uh, closed. Gym is closed. Um, you know, places I steal Wi-Fi, all closed, you know. So where life is reduced to drive-throughs. Uh, so eating in the car and just hanging out, you know. Um, yeah, man, you know, it's crazy. It's, it's, I mean, a lot of the services are different, but... People seem about the same, and that's surprising. So now what happened? Good. Huh? What happened? Not not in the car anymore. Oh no, I'm just at my girlfriend's house, just here hanging out. You know. Yeah. There's a uh, nothing nothing really around anymore for for being in or for being outside. So. So yeah. are you are you able to cook more? That's what you wanted to do when you were inside. Cook more. You know what? Yeah, we're we're making some eggs. That's we're it. Making some eggs. Yep. Yep. Doing it, doing it. Um, Are you sleeping in your car at all? Um, no, not. I mean, I did the first couple days. She's been down in San Diego. She might go see her parents in Florida too, so then I'll go back to it. But for now, I'm here. I am. Um, yeah. Been well, it's a, it's family a, man. Yeah. Well, I know. I mean, it, it. It seems like you've been forced into a domestic life by coronavirus. Mm -hmm. You know, because you can't yeah. go to the gym and take showers. So. Uh, no. Hey, Orny, what's up? So they closed all the comedy clubs, all the bars, all the coffee shops, and there was no place left to go. So I came back to Las Vegas, you know, uh, spent a couple of days sitting in my car. Uh, once they started closing everything down, I was kind of didn't know what to do next. Um, I guess if I didn't have this to come back to, I'd have probably ended up at another comics house or something like that, maybe crashed on somebody's couch. But the biggest thing was just not having any place to be, you know. Um, and I heard they were going to bring the National Guard and shut down California, so I got the hell out of there. And I'm lucky enough to be at my house here in Las Vegas. He's got great big eyes. What's his name, Kev? Orny, Orny, Adams, Adams. Tomorrow, part two of people living in their cars during coronavirus. Tomorrow I get to talk to my buddy Eric Trundy. Uh, he used to live in an RV until, well, wait till you see what happened. Uh, part three will be the following day. All three parts, one, two, three, will be up on YouTube for you to binge starting tomorrow. This is uh, part of What's Wrong with Orny Adams. Here's a preview of tomorrow's segment. Where are you? I'm in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, staying inside. Yeah. Oh, you're not in the RV? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I was in the RV traveling around, talking in different places, you know. And then a uh, hurricane came through, picked up a giant tree, dropped it on top of it, what? destroyed it. What? Yeah, really? yeah. Pretty, like pretty a unlucky. A tr unlucky? Yeah. yeah. No. Dude.